Okay, Brady Girl, so this is your first video from your friendly librarian, well, friendly, um, your librarian at Martinez Elementary, Mrs. Beard. So here I am. Um, well, it's been wild, hasn't it? I think um, none of us are prepared for this. I'm scared a little bit, so it's okay to be scared or not. Sometimes I'm scared, sometimes I'm not that scared. Anyway, what I'm going to try to do is not be like super like official, like if I make a mistake or something or scratch my nose like that, just like if we were in class. So um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is what the assignment is. And I want you to take this opportunity, um, if you can, while I'm talking, to get pencil and paper. I did, with Mr. R, drop off um, some boxes of pencil and paper to um, Rose Garden by the office and then Hacienda Hills. Uh, I may try to do another drop off maybe in a couple of weeks, but, you know, it's not really that safe for people to go out, so I don't want to do it too much. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is we are going to have um, a read aloud, but I want to show you what our finished product, what I'd like your finished product to look like. So this is going to be a circle map exercise. I will hold that up. This is for kindergarten and first, and the book is going to be the three Javelinas. You guys have seen these um, circle maps before, kindergarten and first. I want you to draw five things. If you're in kindergarten, you can draw them. Five things that you remember from the book. If you're in first grade, I'd like you to try to write about five things that you remember. It's okay if you just do a drawing though. And I will show you this again after I read the book, but I want you to know what our outcome is gonna look like so you can think about it while I'm reading. That's for kindergarten and first. All right, for second, third, and fourth. And remember guys, name, teacher's name at the top, because if, when we go back to school, I might have some little prizes for people that have actually completed the work that I ask for, the assignments that I ask for. Might be little treats, might be big treats, might be an extra drawing uh, for prizes, who knows? Oops, that was my phone. Anyway, this is our double bubble. And what we're gonna do is, you know, as a double bubble map, is we're comparing and contrasting something. So we're comparing and contrasting the regular traditional Three Little Pigs story and the Three Javelinas. And again, I will show you these at the end. Okay, all right, let's get started. So this book is called The Three Javelinas. Here, I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit. I think it's fine. The Three Javelinas. And the author is Susan Lowell, and it's illustrated by Jim Harris. Front cover, back cover, spine, of course our title. Author writes the words, illustrator draws the pictures. Here we go. And of course this is similar to the three little pigs, except javelinas are something that are found in the Southwest, a different kind of cousin to a pig, and they are real. Um, of course this story is made up, so it's a fiction story, but javelinas are real animals. So here we go, let's see that cute little picture. Oh my gosh, that's cute. Once upon a time, way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. Their heads are hairy, their backs are hairy, and their bony legs, all the way down to their hard little hooves, were very hairy. But their snouts, this is your snout, like a nose, are soft and pink. One day, the three little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. In this hot, dry land, the sky was almost always blue. Steep purple mountains loomed down on the desert where the cactus for forest grew. Soon, the little, little javelinas came to a spot where the path divided, and each one went a different way. Okay. Just like in libraries, sometimes I don't get the pages always turned. The first little Halina wandered lazily along. He didn't see a dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind blew away and left the little Halina sitting in a hump, heap of tumbleweeds. Brushing himself off, he said, I'll build a house with him. And in no time, he did. He called it number one Tumbleweed Avenue. And a tumbleweed are like, um, well, you can see he made a house out of him here. All right, let's see what the next one does. Then along came a coyote. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he was almost invisible. In fact, this was one of only one of Coyote's many magical tricks. 
He laughed when he saw the tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. Mm -mm, a tender, juicy pig, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. Oh, boy. He called out sweetly, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chin, 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 shouted the first javelina, who had a lot of hair on his chinny, chin, chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. And he huffed and he puffed and he whoo, blew the little tumbleweed house away. But in all the hullabaloo, the first little javelina escaped and went looking for his brother and sister. Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along the side. Oh, boy. The second little javelina walked for miles along the giant cactus plants called sawaros. They held their ripe red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade, and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon a Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried-up cactus. She planned to use these long sticks called sawaros ribs to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second little javelina said, Please, may I have some sticks to build a house? Hau, she said, which means yes in the language of the desert people. Oh, look, there he is, ha. Huh? And there is the indigenous person or the native person showing him how it's done. When he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over to make a place for him. Okay, there they are, and there's a little quail there. When I used to live in Reno, there were a lot of quail in Reno. Oh, I should have turned my phone off, guys. Listen to that. I usually have it on silent, don't I? Pretty soon, Coyote found the Saigowa rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound like just another javelina's. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. But the little javelinas were suspicious. Suspicious means, mm, I'm not sure, something doesn't seem right with this. The second one cried, no, not by the hair of my chin, chin, chin. Ah, thought Coyote, I'm not going to eat your hair. Then Coyote smiled, showing his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and all the sawara ribs came tumbling down. But the two little javelinas escaped into the desert, but still not discouraged, Coyote followed. Sometimes his magic did fail, but then he usually came up with another trick. And I can see him trying to hide behind that cactus right there. Sneaky little guy. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. The third little javelina trotted through beautiful Palo Verde trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by, smooth as oil. Ooh, I like that saw a snake sliding by smooth as oil. I could just picture that. A hawk floated round and round above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground baking in the hot sun. The third javelina thought for a moment and said, may I please have a few adobes to build a house? See, si, said the man, which means yes in Spanish, the brick maker's language. Okay, so this Javelina story, this three little pigs. There's a girl. I think in the um the original one, it's three brothers, I think. Oh, this looks like a nice house. So the her third Javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in summer and warm in winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them. Coyote followed their trail. Oh, she's got a nice house. Yeah, I like her house. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. The three little javelinas looked out the window. This time, Coyote pretended to be old and weak with no teeth and a sore paw. His paw is his hand. But they were not fooled. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, called back the third javelina. Then I'll puff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. He grinned, thinking of the wild pig dinner to come. Just try it, shouted the third javelina. So Coyote huffed, and he puffed but the adobe bricks did not budge. Again, Coyote tried. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The three little javelinas covered their hairy ears, but nothing happened. The javelinas peeked out the window. Oh boy. The tip of Coyote's ragged tail whisked right past their noses. Let's look at that picture. Wow. Let's see. He was climbing upon the tin roof. Next, Coyote used his magic to make himself very skinny. Oh, I wish I had that magic, kids. 
the stovepipe gasp. Remember gasp? We always do gasp, right? <gasps> oh my God, I gasp. Oh my goodness. The third little javelina. Quickly, she lighted a fire inside her wood stove. What a feast it will be, Coyote said to himself. He squeezed into the stovepipe. I think I'll eat them with some red hot chili sauce. Whoosh, sizzle. Then the three javelinas heard an amazing noise. It was not a bark, it was not a cackle, it was not a howl, it was not a scream, it was all those sounds together. Yip, yip, yo, yo, Oh, Ray ran a puff of smoke shaped like a coyote. Oh, look at there. He sure did get sizzled. And can anybody tell me what that picture is? If you watch this video and you do your work, I will give you an extra prize if you can tell me what this is supposed to be a painting of. A copy of a famous painting that is in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. This one here. All right, let's see. Uh, and the three javelinas live happily ever after in the Dobe house. And if you ever hear a coyote's voice way out in the desert at night, well, you know what he's remembering. Woo, 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 woo. There he is. And let's see what's in the back of the book here. So in the back of the book here, it talks about the different... Um, the, the uh, different type of Three Little Pigs story that it had. It's written by the author. So that is our three javelinas today. So again, I'm going to show you this one more time, all right, so that you can get the directions. Five words that you remember, right, or five drawings for kinder that you remember. Don't forget to put your first name and first initial. So Nicole B would be me. I put Dr. Vuich there. You can put S for Miss Scott if you're in kinder. Miss V from Miss Villanueva. J for Johnson. R for Rodriguez. You guys know what to do. Okay, that's for kinder and first. The three javelinas. Now for second, third, fourth, and fifth, you're going to do a double bubble map. First name, last name, and full teacher's name. Okay? Um, so you're looking for three javelinas compared to the three little pigs. Don't copy mine. You can look, maybe you have some of the same ideas. These are the things they share. These are the things that are different. Okay? And I know you guys have done these a lot in library as well as in your regular classrooms. Okay? So that's our story for today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about, or the next time I do a video, rather, we are going to talk about the databases, okay? So this is particularly important for, your third, for my third, fourth, and fifth graders, particularly fifth grade, because you guys are going to be going on doing a lot of reports. So I'm going to give you the passcodes where you can log into Culturegrams and WorldBook um, from a device. Now, I understand not everybody's got a computer, not everybody's going to be able to see this, um, which, you know, is a bummer. Libraries are closed, so we can't say go to the library. It is what it is, guys, and hopefully as many of you as can share this um, with, you know, friends or family or what have you, that would be good. Uh, I know you guys have um, forever books, okay? Um, you know, lots of you who've been with me for years uh, have tons and tons of forever books. If you're not reading